Hi, everybody. Welcome to the TGIF Business Networking Hangout. I'm your host, Melanie MacDonald, and I'm very happy today to have as our special featured guest, Mr. Rob Michael, who just popped in, coming fresh from a guitar lesson that he gives through Hangouts. So today, he's actually going to be talking to us about how he has taken advantage of so many online tools and resources and social media avenues to really boost his business of making music and monetizing his music making. As usual, we're going to start off our day today with our guests giving themselves some nice introductions and letting us know about any events or announcements they have. Left to right, down in the peanut gallery, Andrew, let's start with you. Please give yourself an introduction. Well, my name is Andy Hatchett. I'm a membership chairman for FISO. It's an international standard setting organization for genealogical vendors. Uh, I'm also in Ronnie Benzer's Mastery Hangout class, and I attend most any hangout I can get into. <laughs> So uh, everybody who wants guests for your hangouts, go ahead and add Andy Hatchet to your circles, and uh, he'll be happy to come in and join you. Tim Bloom, awesome. let's go to you next. Can you give us a nice introduction and tell us a little bit about what you do? Sure, sure. My name is Tim Bloom. This is probably, I don't know, maybe my fourth hangout or something like that that I've done, most of them with you, Melani seems to be a common denominator with uh, you and, and me doing Hangouts. Um, I, I've got a kind of diverse background. We come out of uh, decades in the window cleaning industry. We uh, develop products and technology to clean and prevent, protect against uh, dirt and stains. And um, I uh, dabble in a little bit of uh, marketing, I guess you could say, as well, and uh, love love using all the Google, uh, all the fun free Google toys. Awesome. And in fact, in that little dabbling of marketing, Tim is going to be one of my guests on the November first episode of the TGIF as. During the down economy, he and a couple of partners who all serve as new homeowners really found a lot of opportunity where everybody else was finding dead ends. And they got together and created a welcome wagon type of service that goes directly into the new homeowners' homes. And they give them a nice basket of coupons from local businesses and introduce the businesses to them. And they've had a lot of successful results. So we're going to learn more about how they got that idea and how they got that whole welcome wagon type of program started. It's called the Desert Welcome. You can look it up if you're a Coachella Valley local. Go to desertwelcome.net, Tim? Desertwelcome.net. Uh, whichever one you want to go get, both of them, okay. same, same place. Awesome. And uh, it's a great system. Rob, are you ready to oh, yeah. join us and oh, give an yeah. intro? Oh, yeah. Okay. oh, yeah. Hi. Oh, should I give an intro? Yeah. Uh, Hi. Yeah. So let's see. We want to see your face, Rob. We have only your icon showing. Microphone. So there we go. Check it one, two. There we go. Your, uh, click well, your camera icon and let's see if we can get you. Well, there should be my camera muted, and I see myself in the, you know, down at the thumbnail, so I see myself in this hangout, so mm -hmm. why you wouldn't see me, I don't, I'm not quite sure. Well, my guests, do you see Rob, or do you just see his profile picture? I'm seeing, seeing Rob him in on the screen, but not on my phone. Ah. Oh, there's, there's Rob. Okay, um, all I see is a profile picture, so maybe I'm just the only one. But well, I'm seeing similar I'll kind of things from you uh, from time to time. Okay. I'll tell you what's happening. There's a lot of noise in the system and some echo, and that every time that echo comes through, it's overriding Rob's picture. Okay. That's what's causing the jumping back and forth. He he comes on, but then an echo comes in, and it gets overridden. So somewhere there's some noise in the system. I'm just not sure where. Okay, but you guys are actually seeing Rob and not just his profile picture, right? Right. Okay, great. I'm just going to pretend that I'm seeing him too. Uh, gosh, 
I'm really <laughs> bummed that all I get to see is the profile picture, but go ahead, Rob, please introduce yourself. Well, hi, I'm Rob Michael. I'm always in the, I'm in Hangouts all the time, you know, uh, and uh, you know, I do a lot of teaching. In fact, I just flew in from Australia, and boy, are my arms tired. Uh, not really. That's what I do on Fridays. I, I travel around all over the globe. I've, I've visited about four continents so far today. It's about four o'clock in the afternoon here in the uh, in the San Francisco Bay uh, part of California, where where I am in my studio. This is my studio where. Uh, you know, again, I teach, and uh, uh, I, I've even been, you know, given my fair share of concerts from, uh, you know, right here in, in Google Plus Hangouts. You know, they've got them worked out now. Where, well, okay, from Melania's uh, point of view, they don't look. Maybe it doesn't look good, but they'll, they've been looking good and sounding good. I've really been in, enjoying that, and uh, you know, have been using Google Plus over the past couple of years to kind of, uh, you know, expand my business that has been going on for for some time. Uh, and so, so I'm just thrilled. I'm thrilled to be here, and, and great to, to to meet all you guys. So, if you wanna cool. if you wanna find out more about me, if you're really interested, I mean, uh, you, of course, Rob Michael on Google Plus, plenty of stuff there. But my my trio is called the Atmos Trio. That's my group that I work with. And you go to Atmos Music, Atmos, kind of like the beginning of the word atmosphere, AtmosMusic.com, and there's all things, you know, more stuff about me than you'd probably ever want to know. I am going to go ahead and share my screen and go to your website so that people can see it. And hopefully, when I come back, maybe that'll kick my view of Rob back into focus. So my first question for you, Rob, is tell us a little bit about your history before you found the wonderful world of online marketing to help promote your business. You were already a working musician, correct? You did That's a lot right. of session work, and were you already teaching lessons at that time, too? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've been an active uh, music educator for the better part of the past 25 years. Um, that's been a you know kind of a big, a very large component of what I've always done uh, as a, as a musician. Yes, I I play plenty of you know plenty of gigs and plenty of concerts. Done my fair share of touring. I play on records. You know I probably have I don't know seven or eight albums of my of my own. I play on a bunch of other people's records. Uh, but teaching has always been a really really large component of uh, of what I do. Uh, I'm really dedicated and I love doing that. And so I, even now, I mean, good grief, even face to face, even without the whole online you know, internet thing, I still generally see anywhere between 40 to 70 private students every week. I do a lot, a lot of teaching. Um, wow. And, uh, and, and, so, are, and that's the way it's been going. Are you an early adapter? Have you always been kind of into the technology, so you pretty much embraced it as soon as it came out, learned how to use the social avenues to promote your music? Or was that kind of an, an evolution? And if so, how, how did you get started with taking your business online and promoting your music online? I can almost remember the moment that it occurred to me to really use the, the internet to really kind of try to perpetuate and broaden uh, my, my business. Uh, and, I'll, and I'll tell you who it was. There's a, a UK bass player. His name is Steve Lawson. He's active on Google Plus too. He's great. He's, he, he's amazing. He, um, he is very much of a niche musician. He's a, he's a solo bass player. He does looping and stuff. And him and his wife, here's what got my attention. This might go back four or five years ago. Um, he and his wife had uh, booked a, a coast to coast US tour. They live in the UK, but they had booked a coast to coast US tour in the dead of winter. <coughs> Pardon me. And and they had done this. It was a successful, profitable tour. The two of them had done this. And they had done it, they had booked and promoted their tour via Twitter and nothing else. They had they didn't use anything else. There was no radio promotion. They didn't have an agent. They didn't have a you know any the normal infrastructure that you would think a touring music act would do. Uh, and they did primarily, you know, they would do some concerts. They did a lot of house concerts, but whatever the case, the idea that they were and they did it a couple times, book a a, a, U, a US coast to coast tour via just this, you know, Twitter at that time really just sort of shook, you know, grabbed me by the lapel and shook me. It really got my attention. And so that it, it it then dawned on me, you know, the way I had had been operating there to four was that uh, you know you 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 book some shows someplace in a room, <coughs> pardon me, and then 
you, you know, you, you're basically dealing with a room full of people, right? Maybe it could be, it might be 12 to 20 people, it might be several thousand people, but basically your your reach, if you want to call it that, was limited to the people who were there in that room with you. And then you would book another gig and you'd have, have that experience again in another space and again and again and again. And you would do that maybe for years on end. Well, well, I'm a jazz musician, right? So, uh, you know, I, again, that's kind of a little bit of a niche thing in the world of music. And and so it, it crossed my mind, you know, if Steve could do this, Steve and his wife Lo, that that I could instead of just communicating with uh, with people one room at a time, that maybe an effort to to kind of you know find people who are into what I do, maybe I could just cast a net over the entire planet and kind of do, accomplish the same thing rather than just deal with you know the limitations that, that four walls and a ceiling in one room. And so that was sort that was sort of the the impetus behind my uh, you know kind of changing my mind by how I would use because before that I would just like oh okay here's a you know here I made a YouTube video and I might put it on my blog and then I would that would be the end of it I would just kind of forget about it you know I wouldn't really be any more active than that you know so that's I guess does that tell the story Steve Lawson was my guy he was the guy who kind of really got me into that mindset of of a kind of a global. Uh, uh, cash in a net globally to try to find people who are were receptive to what I do. And and so when you felt that way, did you kind of have a method to your madness, or did you just kind of throw yourself out there and learn as you were going along? And I think this is kind of an interesting question, both for musicians, because there's so many creatives out there who make beautiful art or music and are always the big question is looking for how do I monetize mm -hmm. what I'm making. Mm -hmm. So did you kind of take a, sort of a, a progression of classes of you know how to do internet marketing or did you just kind of watch what you're you know everything that you told us about you were watching and learning and you just felt it and went out and did it. I didn't take any any classes. It wasn't like any big organized, orchestrated technique whatsoever. I basically just conducted and continued to conduct myself on the internet exactly the same way as I do in person, right? It's not it's not like there's this other separate machine at work, and then there's me, this guy who shows up to the gig with a the guitar. They were one and the same, the same thing, you know. <coughs> and and so that's. You see, I guess to me when I say that, that sounds a very obvious thing to, to do. Um, but so, uh, so often I see people who, see, who, if you see their internet presence and then you meet the person in person, it's all there. It's like they're different entities. And so I always kind of felt that that was a little odd. It was an odd experience whenever I would encounter that, you know. So, so I just try to make it the same. I try to make it the same, the same thing. If you see me on a concert on uh, Google Plus, or if you, you know, go down my blog, hopefully the the tone, the look and the feel, and kind of the the vibe is all all one thing. You know, I don't want to be. I, I what I don't I, I don't want to be that guy who 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 you know. If you look at their Google Plus stream or their Twitter stream, where you see like, oh, there's you know, 45 posts of their last video that they made last week. I really don't. You know, I don't like seeing that among other people. So I certainly don't want to be that guy to other people. If that makes sense. Well, you know, I'm I'm now I'm on the event page, so I can actually see what the rest of you are seeing. And I see your beautiful studio and your children back there all lined up in a row. Very nice. <laughs> I thought I was going to have kids back there. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I was referring to that photo on your website. Oh, the kids. Oh, yes, yes, Take yes. Before we go on. <laughs> so that was fun. So let me ask you this. Being that comfortable with reaching out to people online, yep is being comfortable with kind of putting yourself out there and as you said you're just yourself the same person yep. do you think that your experience of being a stage musician and being used to performing in front of people made it easier for you to transition to this very public kind of online uh, marketing method and and world of being online and hanging out and meeting people all around the world because I think some new business owners and solopreneurs find that a little daunting and, and something they have to get used to as being part of the business. Well, I guess yes would be the short answer, excuse me, would be the short answer 
to that. But even more of a, you know, kind of a, a primer to all that is just the idea that if you're in any sort of, you know, look, I'm a, I'm a working musician. So, so like, like really kind of every business, it's kind of a sales gig, you know, to some degree, it's a sales thing. And, uh, you know, one of the first things you learn in any type of sales situation is how to deal with rejection, right? That's, that's a bigger part of the gig than, than, than writing deals of any kind. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, and so, so deal, you know, uh, learning how to, how to cope with that and, and just kind of let it, you know, maybe you develop a thick skin or you allow things to kind of ricochet off of you and not really take uh, maybe someone who, who's not receptive or interested in what you're doing and not really take that to heart and let that kind of crush you. You know, it's, 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 you, you learn how to take, so, so yeah, I suppose play, you know, learn being on stage and I, it's the same thing. You know, I, I just, you know, you, you do your thing and if, if people dig it, great, you know, that, that's super. If they don't, well then that's, that's okay too. That's great. And what is it that you like to do the most? Do you like teaching? Do you like performing? Is it kind of all together? Because I have met some musicians in the past who are like, well, I really want to stick to just, you know, promoting my own music and trying to sell my music. I don't really want to do the teaching. I don't really want to do the session work. I don't really want to be paid to, to play, you know, at, at restaurants or wherever other places where they play people to play live. Mm -hmm. And I've read, heard other musicians that are all about doing the lessons and doing the online stuff and aren't really necessarily interested in trying to sell their music. Mm -hmm. Is it possible for musicians to be compartmentalized and still be successful or it really do you really have to kind of embrace the whole package? Well, that's an interesting question. I mean, people deal with uh, become they they become musicians or artists or whatever they choose to be for many different reasons you know and they're all valid you know there's not any one reason that you would choose to be a musician for example in my case uh you know i i've known a number of uh, of great musicians who who were never interested in making that their vocation in any way shape or form they just wanted to pursue it as a hobby and that's that's as valid it's it's no less valid than being kind of a, a grammy winning you know superstar person it, they're of equal uh, validity um so i don't really have any criticism for people who 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 just have a different approach um that said i mean for me, it, it wasn't really a choice. You know, I'm, I'm kind of one of these people who from the time I was about 10, 10 maybe eight, 8 to 10 years old, I knew already, I was certain what I, what I was going to do with the rest of my life, which later on, actually about the time I got in college, I found out that that's a rather unique position to be in, right? People would be done with college and they still didn't know what they wanted to be when they grew up. You know, well, I already knew. And so I guess I had that, that going for me. Um, and so I didn't really feel like it was even a choice that I made. I almost, I felt as though I, uh, not that I had been selected by someone else, but it was just, I, I didn't really have any alternative. That was, you know, uh, what else, good God, what else would I do? Even though I did, you know, when I was younger, I did other things, but it was always in the name of kind of perpetuating or, you know, getting that, my, my then, you know, musical business off the ground. You know, I used to be a chef, you know, when I was like a, you know, in my, a teenager in my early 20s. That's what I did, you know, because I could make more money doing that than, than playing gigs. I was still just trying to get my whole scene, uh, you know, to, together from a playing perspective. So, so I get it. You know, if somebody doesn't want to play certain kind of gigs, maybe they only want to play big concerts. Okay, well, there's certain stuff you have to do to put yourself in a, a position to be able to, to, to do that, you know, or some people, they just want to want to play for the enjoyment of playing and they don't want to have to deal with all the, the, the nonsense that can come along with just making that a business. And, you know, that's cool. There's nothing wrong with that. Now you have a background where you were already a successfully working musician before all the online stuff came out. Do you think that that gave you a great advantage or do you think that, you know, if you were just coming kind of into your music career as the online stuff uh, was available, would it, has it really made it a lot easier for any independent musicians to make a living, to monetize their art, do you think? Or is having prior experience in the music industry and navigating some of the, the business within that industry a big leg up? 
Well, I think uh, dealing with the being a musician or and a working professional outside of this whole thing that we call social media and the internet is crucial. Whether you're, whether you have a background in it or not, you have to deal with it. You know, it can't just be this all social media thing and nothing else. I don't think, I think this is just one little component, a newer kind of uh, component that didn't exist not that many years ago, but that it's, it's just one small portion of this larger body of things. So yes, it's a, you know, the, I mean, look, even if I was just starting out now and I was just sort of whatever, I was a YouTube star or something, you've, you've still got all this other stuff you have to learn. You have to get together. You've, you know, you've got to learn how, how to, you know, do signal flow and how to, how to, how to interact with the band if you're going to you know, play in an ensemble. You have to do all that stuff. You know, if you're, if you're going to do more than, you know, whatever, just be, I just picked an example, be a YouTube star. Not that there's anything wrong with that either. But I, I, I view kind of the whole online thing that we that we all are, are doing as just one little part, one little piece of this other thing that I've always done and will continue to do, you know, go, moving forward. Right. And I think that's a really good point, no matter what industry you're in, if you're thinking about taking some of your business online. Because I think that with the term internet marketing, a lot of people think that means I'm just going to go out on the internet and I'm going to make some money and just use these online things. But really it comes back to what is it that you are offering? You actually have to have some kind of quality product or service first and not necessarily be making it up as you go along. So I think that's a great point to make. And Andy, do you have any questions? If you do, just you know, raise your hand and let us know. Uh oh nope. we don't have any audio from Andrew. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I was being no, none okay. right now. I I would say this: you got to have your basics down first before you do oh. anything. Yeah. You know, if you're lucky enough to know early in life what you want to do in life, that in itself gives you a huge head start over everybody else. Yeah. Because you don't have to fool with what they have to go through trying to figure out what they want to be. You've already gone through all that, and it's passed, and you can get on with what you want to do. Exactly right. You know, I was lucky enough to do the same thing. I decided very early in life that I didn't want to do anything, so I made it my business <laughs> to get to a point where I could do that. Nice. See, very go. nice. <laughs> very nice. I think we all aspire to that, don't we? <laughs> okay, going back to Rob. Rob, what were what are some of the online outlets that you use to promote your services, your music, and your lessons? Well, uh, of late, the most successful one for me it, it's just been is, has been Google Plus, uh, and I think it's because of this 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 format we are in now. This, these hangouts. Um, that was, this was, that was a big deal. You know, I mean, I use Facebook and Twitter and I even, good grief, I even used MySpace back in the, in the day and I have my own blog and, you know, on and on. You go to my profile, there's a whole long list of just stuff, friend feed, on and on and on. <clears throat> Pardon me, but the, you know, SoundCloud, uh, even iTunes, I can just keep on going on and on and on. But uh, Google Plus was kind of, has been, you know, kind of the, the one that's really kind of put a biggest dent in, in kind of my day-to-day uh, reality and again it was it was back to that concept where where i am using this to again try to sort of cast a, a net across the entire planet all at one one time you know i mean let's say for example hypothetically let's say there was only say i don't know a hundred people on the entire world who cared at all about what i do well i'm gonna have a hard time finding a hundred people on the entire planet earth if i just go room by room by room by room but uh, here on these Google Plus Hangouts, you know, I could, I could, I could just, you know, I'd be here in my studio and I'd be holding my guitar much the same way as I was when I first showed up here today. And without showing up and saying, "Hey, everybody, look at me! I'm going to play my guitar for you." No, no, no. I mean, I wouldn't do that in real life. What a silly thing to do. I mean, that would be ridiculous. You know, but I'm just here. I, you know, I, I'm joining. I'm joining a room full of people I don't even know. I'm just popping in, saying hi, introducing myself, <laughs> getting to know, to know who they are. And eventually, someone would say, "Hey, uh, you, uh, Rob Michael, you've got that guitar and all that stuff behind you. Can you play us a tune?" They'd ask me to play. 
And I would be happy to, sure. I'd be glad to. So I would I would just play, 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 play. And then and then pretty soon, you know, I mean, some people would would be indifferent, but other people would be fascinated. They would be kind of drawn into my world, you know. And, you know, God, you know, even so okay, it's, it's still at one room at a time, but like this room that we're in, maybe nine nine or ten people strong, it would we would all be on different continents. We'd be all over the planet, you know. And so that was a big, a big thing right there that I could just pop in and say hi and, you know, introduce myself, you know, again, much the way you would, at, you know, any uh, a lunch, you know, with, with people that you would, don't, uh, didn't know before. And that was a big, a big, big deal. All of a sudden, you know, it was m- much more than a hundred people, it turned out, who knew, that were kind of into, interested in what I was doing, you know, pretty soon, I, it was like thousands and thousands of people. And I could say, but it was great because I was still meeting them, you know, on a one-on-one type basis, just the way we are here in the, in this, in this hangout. So, so Google Plus has been, you know, for the on, for the online marketing, I don't really think of it as I'm on, I'm marketing online. I don't really think of it like that. I guess if you reverse engineer it, I suppose that's kind of what goes on. But I was just trying to hang out, you know, meet people, you know, be, see see what it, people were there that I was interested in. That's another big thing. You know, you don't just want to be some big outward bound broadcasting person. You know, it's it's a two way street. It's a conversation. You know, right. that's the way that's the way you deal with people. Right. I mean, good grief. Can you imagine, you know, like going to whatever Taco Bell or something and just blasting out all this marketing speak? You know, it's like people are just going to laugh at you when you leave. You know, it's just, you're not going to accomplish anything by by that, you know. So I just meet people and and, and pick and, and so, you know, look back and say, hey, wow, check it out. There's these, these folks who are kind of. You know, we have this mutual interest. That's what it, what it really is. And, and, you know, I see it's not just me and, 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 and my guitar doing that. I see that, of course, in a big way here on Google Plus with photographers. You know, there's yeah. a huge, huge photography scene. So, you know, and so who knew? I didn't know I was even interested in phot- photography or could even participate in that. So I kind of got sucked into that little world, too. And I was happy, happy to do it. I found it very, you know, really fascinating and interesting. And it's, the same, and it's kind of the same dynamic there. I have to agree. I think Hangouts are just so powerful. That face-to-face networking is still just something there. It it creates connections that you don't get otherwise, but when you get to see the person and see their smile and see them being animated, and I can't wait to watch this back so I can see you being all of those things. (laughs) But it does make a, a, a nice difference, I think, and you feel more connected to that person, you feel like you're getting to know them, even if you haven't ever met them in person, more so than just, I think, carrying on a conversation in posts and texts, you know, because you just have that extra dimension of real-time connection. Oh, there's no question. Oh, sure, go ahead. There's no question uh, of that. I mean, you know, when we're hearing these hangouts, it's very different from, certainly from a text-based interaction or even a phone call. You know, a phone call can get, you know, you get to know people on the phone, but this is, this is the next best thing. You know, I'll tell you, uh, here, here was my impression, you know, when I first saw these, these hangouts, and I'm not exaggerating, I, I really felt at that time, and I still kind of do, that I was looking at something that was no less significant than maybe the telephone or the, the TV or, or electricity even. That I was like, wow, this is a new utility that's going to be, that's indisposable. You know, that it was that significant. I still believe that even now. now I'm used to it. You know, culturally, I'm more accustomed. You know, it's been here for a couple of years. It's not that the novelty has somewhat worn off, but I don't think the significance is any any less than these things that my grandparents saw, you know, kind of develop in, in, in culture. This is kind of a, a new thing that's of, of similar importance that we're looking right. at with these, uh, with these hangouts. And it's not just communicating with each other. It's look at how many people have started using hangouts in their businesses. So it's just got so many, so many uses that are beneficial both just in connecting with people on a personal level, but also on a business level too. You bet. And it really kind of evens evens the board out because before it used to be either you just have to have a lot of money and do be able to do all kinds of push advertising, but now it's more about just joining in conversations Agreed. and getting people to talk about you, which is really nice, and talking about them too. Right. But, I, I'm interested, when you do your online classes, is it a lot of one-to-ones or do you have situations where you're 
in a classroom. There's a classroom full of, you know, students in a music class somewhere. The vast majority of my teaching in Hangouts is, is private one-on-one uh, lessons, though I have uh, done, uh, you know, it was kind of an experiment. And I, I just kind of, I, I just kind of put it out there a while back, and I, I invited anyone who wanted, uh, for just a free lesson. I was like, here it'll be, and I, and I specified, you know, because because if you say that, you can get all these guitar hotshots who want to come in and kind of show you all their all their stuff, you know. So I said, no, no, this is going to be an entry level beginning guitar lesson, you know. So for people who who you know maybe have or have had a guitar in your house that has gone underutilized, you know, bring that, and I'll just show you how to how to play some stuff. And uh, so that was great. And it worked out really nicely. It was again, it was an experiment. I may, maybe you know people were saying, "Oh yeah, you should put that as a hangout on air." They were they were around already by that time. But it was an experiment, so it was a kind of a clandestine little private hangout. But there was you know you know eight or nine of us in there, and it turned out great. So I probably will do um, a lot more of that. But right now, all of my pretty much m- the vast majority of my uh, my teaching is a one on one type thing. Well, you know, I mean, I think this opens up a lot of possibilities too for the kids out there and the parents who maybe don't have time to drive a kid to a lesson somewhere aren't necessarily comfortable with dropping in moth at somebody's house that they don't know a whole lot. Mm -hmm. So uh, to me, when I was thinking about this, I thought, gosh, if I was a parent or a teacher or somebody that was involved with kids, I think this hangout is such a perfect solution to, okay, this kid can have you know, some really great lessons, and yet I don't have to worry about him being alone with, you know, some musician that I never met before. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you get a lot of that kind of reaction from parents. It, it works both ways, you know. Um, <laughs> pardon me. It, there, there is that dynamic that you just described. Uh, and some people are into it, or, or you know, uh, m- most of the people who, who, who I teach, they're not just looking for a guitar instructor. They usually kind of know something about me, so they want they want Rob Michael. They want they want they want to study with me, um, and so so there is. But there is that dynamic. It's like well, you know, yeah, or maybe they live in a remote area where where that's yeah. just not available to them, or it's in a country where that's you know that's not available. Right. So 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 this is, is is a good avenue for that. The flip side of that, however, is more and more. Uh, especially, I, I don't know if it's I don't know if it's, it's unique to my area or not. I live here in the San Francisco Bay Area, but I have a number of students. Even 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 my daughter, uh, you know, she did a lot of her her basic. She did high school online, right on on the internet, and so. For those people, the, this online lesson thing is not necessarily so attractive because they need a contrast from that experience. You know, so they're they're the people who want to come and see me in person. And I, because and I, and I, I didn't really cross my mind until uh until I said you know until maybe there was a scheduling conflict and they couldn't couldn't make it to their lesson. I said, well, you know, hey, I do this online thing. We can still have their have your lesson that way. And that's when they said, oh God, no. The last thing I want to do is sit in front of the computer anymore. I do enough of that. You know, I was like, oh, okay, mental note. You know, so it works both ways. It just it just depends. It's funny. I, I just never would have thought of that, but that's yeah. that's true. Yeah. And uh, I I I don't know. That's really interesting. But I like what you said about it opening up possibilities to people who wouldn't have been able to take a music lesson before. Now, because of the technology, they can. Yeah. Sure. And, and that's really cool. I think it's also a great way for teachers and educators to have guests come in their classroom who aren't necessarily local. But, you know, for example, for some middle school class to have, you know, oh, Rob Michael, the musician, he's going to come into our classroom today. We're going to see him, you know, up on the big projected screen. I think that's a nice treat for the students. It's a nice treat for the teacher. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's just a nice feeling all the way around that that can happen. It sparks the kids' interest. They get to see what a, a musician's studio looks like because we can see your background. Right. That kind of sparks their interest and they get a little more insight into what you do and how you work versus yeah. just kind of somebody coming into the class because they see how you're set up with your equipment and they know that you can also do concerts this way and you can broadcast this way. So. Yeah. There's all kinds of blending of arts and music and, uh, you know, technology, I think, out there that are possible. It's not only in the formal education field. It is also great for homeschoolers 
I yeah. know a group of mothers who homeschool their children, mm -hmm. and each of them, basically, they're little classes. One mother will do the history part. One mother will do the math part. They'll have all their kids around the computer at the same time and invite different speakers into those classes for those individual children. It's marvelous. Yeah. You know, they those kids, because most homeschool kids don't get exposed to that type of stuff. I mean, they're studying their books at home and everything, but they have no interaction with, you know, like musicians and artists or lecturers or whatever. And this is a great format for that. You bet. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's wonderful. Rob, do you find yourself playing out less live now than you did before you got interested in all the online opportunities? I, I don't know that I, 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 I do that less. However, this is very much of a, a realization of sort of a fantasy that I've always had all these years. I mean, you know, look, as a working musician, you only need to lug a bunch of equipment into a, a venue one time before you say, wow, it'd be really great if there was an alternative to this part, you know. Um, in fact, I've joked many times that I show up and I play music for free. It's the carrying the gear around that I charge money for, right? That, that's the part. That's the part you're paying me for, you know. And so my fantasy all through like the 80s and 90s was here's how I saw it you know I thought man this is gonna be like a Star Trek thing I said uh, my fantasy was I would be sitting in my studio just like I am now and uh, I would play a gig and I thought at that time I'm like I, I maybe I could just hire someone who at that time maybe maybe a screen would be like a, a handkerchief that you could pull out of your pocket and unfold it like a flag and hang it on the wall and I'd have to hire someone to go do that for me and then I'd play the gig and then they'd take the handkerchief down and 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 that's how we go. It, you know, it never crossed my mind that everyone already had a screen in their pocket. You know, that, never, that part never crossed my mind. And so, so this very is really very much of a sort of a realization of this sort of I thought an absurd fantasy. You know, an alternative to carrying my amp around. You know, you know, plugging everything in, and I have my amp underneath a neon sign in a bar that was making all this noise and stuff. You know, and you know, and that. But so no, I don't. I don't actually do it less. Uh, you know, play out less. But I do. It's it's fun that I have this other thing. You know, that I, that I can do, and it's not just performing. You know, I'll tell you. Arguably, here's the the biggest dynamic you know there's a lot of mythology that surrounds being a musician you know a lot of people just don't really know you know we all have these assumptions you know oh he's a professional musician so you know just saying that there's a whole bunch of just assumptions that people that people make you know that what must go on with 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 that and that's a really kind of even other musicians you know or, or people who aspire to kind of make a, a business out of that. You know, I, I like to just share that. It's, you know, here's, here's what's going on under the hood. You know, here's what's going on when you walk off stage. You know, the gig's not over. You know, here's, here's this other stuff. Or, or before, you know, here's, you know, booking a gig. You know, it's not all promotion. It's kind of, you know, check it out. Let me share with you. Here's, here's, here's the, the, the underworkings of this whole, this whole machine, you know. Because that's what I was, was interested in. You know, I've met a bunch of my music heroes you know over the years but i was i wasn't one of these I, I can see what goes on on stage but it was all the other stuff that was always the stuff that was shrouded in mystery to me you know that's what i wanted wanted to know about and so that's what i like to you know hit people to as well you know you know what's going on in this studio what are you doing with all this equipment you know how do you maintain it what do you what the heck is it for uh, you know Etc. You know, it's get you. And you know, here's what it really is being a musician. You're sure you want to do this? Here, let me show you what's going on here. You know, right. And and that's just really interesting, I think, to to the public in general too. Yeah. But you know, I have to ask you because I I have a, a musician I'm pretty close to, and he's gone through this struggle of when he does a live show if he's broadcasting it. Uh, on a hangout or wherever, and he goes to great pains to make sure that like the sound is good, and he's got mm -hmm. the right mic by his guitar and the right mic by his voice, yep. and you know I'm always like, but they're watching it on an iPad, you know, <laughs> like does it really does it frustrate you as a mu musician or concern you that the quality of what you're putting in may not be the quality that, of what people are receiving because to me. I've kind of felt like, you know, I have 
not a musical bone in my body, but I'm a great listener. I'm a great target, you know, example of a listening audience. And I always think I don't really care that it's coming out on my tinny little iPad. I like the groove, you know. It yeah. makes me move. So from but from the musician end, is that something that you think about much or do no. at all? Not so much because it's just beyond my control. You know, I, I don't, you know, it's the same thing with, you, you know, my recordings, you know, I, I, it's not up to me what people listen to that on, you know, I, I from that perspective, I am just out, outputting data, you know, it's just an output thing. I don't have any control over the, what goes on, on the other end of that. Um, you know, so, for, you know, fortunately, you know, if you're, if you're, if you're broadcasting a, a hangout, presumably you're recording it as well. So if someone's listening to a, to it on whatever, just, you know, the speaker on your iPad, which is kind of anticlimactic from a musical right. perspective, well, then they can check it out later on in some better headphones or on some other, other medium, you know, but, but I mean, that's, that's even true of, you know, if, if, when you go to the, go to a gig, you know, you, you who knows? You know, I can bring my PA. You know, I have a nice you know PA system here and amplifiers and all that. Okay, I'm I'm a little more in the driver's seat there, but sometimes you're not. You show up and you just plug in the whatever's there and make it make make the best of it. You know, a lot of times you do that. <laughs> and I, you know, I I actually really enjoy hearing stuff that musicians are creating themselves and just putting out themselves. I've heard a few times where bands I really, really enjoyed live would get signed and they'd make an album, the album come out, and I'd be like, is this even the same band? It doesn't yeah. sound anything like when they're playing live. Yeah. But yet when the musicians are able to kind of have all that creative control over themselves of what they want to record and how they want to do it, yeah. I think sometimes we get a truer picture of what they're putting out in their hearts. That's a great point. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, these studios, uh, I mean, it's kind, you, you really can kind of manufacture this fictitious thing. It's absolutely, uh, it's, it's common, you know, to do that where, where, where a lot, you know, kind of my experience is the opposite of what you've described. You know, we hear this recording, oh, okay, so this is, there, here's this thing. And then we see them live and it's like, wait a minute, I, there's this kind of, uh, I can't really match these two things <laughs> up. You know, I, I, I can't quite, you know. They're, they're very different, different things, you know. Well, they're different mediums, right? A recording medium versus a live performance medium. Okay, I get that, but you know, again, I'm not. It's not really even a judgment thing. It's just kind of an interesting contrast that you sometimes run into. Yeah, and and it's. I think it's always interesting to hear the difference in the point of view from the listener end and the musician end. Right. You know, I mean, it's kind of like you know, I love. Uh, I love documentaries. That's my favorite thing. I, I, to, if I'm going to watch something on Netflix or something, I'm going to head straight for the documentaries. And so, you know, it's just like the, like if you see, when you see the movie, uh, some movie with lots of CG, you know, like Inception or something, right? But then you can then you see, well, what actually happened on the set? You know, and as these people doing their thing in front of a green screen. I just, for me, that's interesting. You know, wow, that was really different than what you thought was going on there, you know? I just find that kind of thing interesting, and that's that's kind of what I'm talking about. What I want to let people in on what's 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 going on. I want to, I want them to see the green screen or whatever goes on into the making of whatever it is, whether it be a live a live thing or maybe it's a maybe we're arranging a tune. What are the op, you know various options where you could actually arrange a tune or or, or recording stuff? You know, for for documentary people, I'm your guy, I guess. <laughs> right. What advice do you have for other musicians out there who are starting to come into their own as a musician and have all these online tools available to them and are thinking about, oh my gosh, where do I start? Look at all the stuff that's out there. They come to your page and they see all those links in your profile. Yeah. What advice do you have for someone starting out? Well, as I said earlier, people play music for, for different reasons. Um, you know, I mean, I'll tell you, it's a matter of what you're trying trying to cultivate. I mean, are you trying to cultivate, are you trying to make opportunities for yourself so that you can go out and play live? Are you trying to make opportunities for yourself to record on other people's records? And are you trying to make an opportunity for yourself to, to make your own recordings and then just sell those to people? Is it, you know, it's probably a combination of, of things. But, you know, you kind of have to have a, you know, a target that you're shooting for, you know. I mean, it's not a recipe. You know, it's not a matter of like, I mean, oh, gosh, I hate to say, to, to say this almost. But, you know, I hear plenty of, uh, you know, sort of, uh, what do you want to call them, you know, marketing gurus you know, or whatever, you know, uh, who, who's, who charge money. 
You charge musicians or other people, creative people, money to say, okay, here, I'm going to show you the way. Here's how, you know, it's, it's a very show busy kind of presentation typically, you know. And then I keep, you know, and, and they'll say, okay, yeah, so get your, get your Facebook page and, and then get your search engine optimization stuff and then get your Twitter thing going on. And it's like, I don't know, it just strikes me as disingenuous. Uh, uh, I think the way to make money is to talk people into buying tickets to your, uh, your, <laughs> to your, uh, to your speech, you know. In, in, that, in that particular case, I don't think there's a, a, a real recipe, you know. If someone is up and coming, I, I, you know, what does that mean? I mean, you've got to get your, your – if you're, if you're going to be a musician – well, what kind of musician? Are you going to be like, a, you know, sort of a visual dance personality? Or are you going to be someone who's like a, an advanced player? Or are you going to be, you, you, you know, what are you, what are you shooting for? I was always, I've always, and I continue to be interested in someone who's just a, a, a real player, right? A, a real musician league guy. You know, I learned how to read music and to arrange and to orchestrate and record and, you know, play gigs. You know, deal with all, all of that. Uh, but other people are more interested maybe in, you know, lip syncing and doing an tr- impressive dance thing or something. You know, that's maybe their, their, their presentation. And those two things require, a pr- I think, a, a pretty different approach. I, don't right. know if, I hope that answers your question. It does. They do I have one it. thing in common, though. If What's they're that? going to be getting into this thing, they have to learn to use the tools well. Sure. Because I don't care how good a magician you are, if you go online and make a lousy video presentation, then you've got to dig yourself out of a hole to get back to level so you can start building. So the best advice is, if you want to do this, set your music aside until you learn how to use the tools. Once you learn the tools, then go out and do it. I guess so. I mean, I get it. I get, I, I get that, you know, uh, at the same time that we all, we we're, this is new, this is a new kind of cultural phenomenon, this whole online thing. So we're all learning as we go along, you know, uh, you can look at anybody, uh, it doesn't matter who, I mean, whether you see some YouTube star or, 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 or a famous photographer, you can, you know, here we have all these timelines, you know, Facebook or Google plus, we can go back in time. I can see what you did two years ago. I can go back and see what you were. So I can see your output from, from the past. And then I can view, I can, I can examine this evolution of what you've been doing, you know? Uh, and I think that's a good thing. You know, uh, you know, we all, we all start, some somewhere you know i mean and we are and plus with this whole online thing we're not even in control completely of of what there is out there i mean good grief if i poke around hard enough i i I can probably find some really poorly done you know telephone video recordings of me in god knows where you know which i may or may not really want out to be there but that's that's beyond my control you know it's beyond my beyond my control but i think i understand andrew what you're what you're what you're talking about you know like you know i made it my business you know i i i i i do video stuff you know so i had to learn how to use uh you know various video editing software and i learned a, th- a, th- a thing or two about cameras and i you know buy some try you know some equipment it, it these days the the cost of entry is not very high you know i i, I you know even if you're going to make some nice hd videos you know i don't know Swing by my YouTube page, see what you think. I, I make all of my videos. Do I have it? Look, look at this. I use this. This is a $100 point-and-shoot camera. It's a little HD camera. It's pretty impressive. A little $100 camera. I don't even think they make this kind of... I, I, I guess I, I could do the same thing on my phone or my iPad now. You know, and a little $12 tripod that I probably got from Amazon. Yeah, you know, plastic tripod. It works fine. They work great, you know. And then I would even use this camera. I've got, a, you know, it's a $60 webcam. I, view, I use that too, you know. And I've got all this high-end audio stuff, so I make sure the audio is happening, you know. And then I edit it all together. And I mean, usually the, the you know... I guess you, like you said, I, I kind of may, have studied what other other people do, you know, and see what camera angles and you know editing and blah blah blah, you know, get it all together. But it was an evolution. I didn't just start, you know. I just you, know, you started at the beginning, and you know, and you might make some rickety looking, you know, beginner looking stuff. But you get better if you keep doing it. You got to keep doing it. That's what it is. You got to keep on. You got to keep on doing it. You know, you don't just want to make a, a whatever a crappy video and then stop there and say there. That's that's what I got, you know. You got to keep on, you know, cranking out stuff, content. Well, we're getting 
pretty close, but I have to ask you a couple of last questions. Tell us a little bit about the Atmos Trio, and is there actually a trio? Because I keep seeing the Atmos Trio, but I only see pictures of Rob. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that <laughs> funny? So, so is there, there a trio, and who are the other folks in the trio? <laughs> there is a trio. It's uh, it's Joe Shotwell, and I uh, started this group. It's funny, you know, uh, and he's my he's my drummer. He lives out, out in uh, Napa. And, in fact, we've even given Google Plus concerts as a trio right here in the studio and, and, and broadcast those out. Uh, but Joe Shotwell, great, uh, great, great drummer. Uh, back in t we, st we started the Atmos Trio back in 2003 or four, almost 10 years ago. Uh, and what it was, here was the concept, here was the idea, is that we were already, you know, busy working musicians, you know, largely with other people's project. You know, they'd hire me and I'd go play guitar and whatever, the, whatever it was they were doing. And same thing with him with drums. We'd tour around, whatever it was. Uh, and when you do that, you know, you're basically, uh, you're, you're employed by someone else. You know, they say, this is the musical function I need you to provide and this is the service and you show up and you do that, right? It's a musical service that you're providing. And... Uh, you know, after, after a while, you know, you kind of want to say, well, gosh, you know, this is cool, you know, but I want to kind of do my own thing, too. And that's what, the, what was the catalyst for the Atmos Trio. And at first, all it was was we didn't even plan on having a group or making records or anything. We just said, here, let's just get together like every Monday morning. We'll all just meet here in my studio. We'll just play some tunes just to kind of, you know, get it out of our system, so to speak. And then it kind of evolved into this, you know, this thing that's now the, the Atmos Trio. And so, so, so I've got uh, Joe, Joe on board. And he and it's his, his and I pro, and my project, and then um, uh, we've got a couple of different bass players. One of my guys, uh, his name is Cliff Hugo, and uh, when he's not busy playing in the Atmos Trio, he's kind of a big international rock star with the group uh, Super Tramp. Oh, Remember yeah. Super Tramp? They were huge, huge stars. They're still huge stars in Europe, and he's been he's been their bass player for I don't know fifteen or twenty years, you know. So so yeah, when he's not busy being a you know a, a rock star being whisked away on private jets and limousines, <laughs> he plays jazz gigs with me. Awesome. And then. Uh, <laughs> It's so funny, right? I mean, it's this big contrast. It's like that with everybody, though. I, I can't tell you how many times where, where I've played a show, maybe it's like, wow, we're playing it for, you know, 10,000 people, and you know, people want your autographs if you're a rock star. And then the next day, you know, you're playing to a, a, an indifferent, you know, crowd at, uh, you know, uh, some cafe who's more interested in, you know, checking their email and listening to what you're playing. And it's like, wow, it's only 24 hours ago. You know, it's a, it's a funny contract. It happens all the time. It happens all the time. You know, from rock star to hired help, you know, you, awesome. watch it, you know, it, it happens all the time. And then another bass player, you know, so, so, you know, Cliff might be off and, you know, being a rock star. So then I have um, Wolf Wine. Uh, who is also a great bass player as well. And when he's not playing with me, he's actually a, a composer, uh, and he does uh, soundtrack work. You know, uh, pro video games is kind of his main thing. So he does video game soundtracks in his very impressive studio, and when he's not, you know, do, making these epic soundtracks, well, he comes and plays jazz gigs with me. That sounds fun. Yeah. I have to ask you this. I've got your website up on screen yep. and I see you have a WordPress site and you have a lot of the great things that a lot of small business people and solopreneurs and entrepreneurs in a variety of industries have on their websites. You've got your share buttons, you've got lots of posts here and you've got your subscription, your email going mm -hmm. and you're putting up music so let me ask you this. How much of your time is dedicated to all this back-end administration, taking care of your website, taking care of your email list, taking care of all of that stuff, versus how much time you get to spend actually playing your guitar, or giving lessons, or, or you know, doing studio sessions? Well, the answer is certainly more than I would like, I'll tell you that. Uh, but... You know, fortunately, most of that stuff, it's, it, it, to some degree, I've got it set up where it's kind of set and forget. Uh, and and, the, and, that, and by, by that I mean, you know, uh, you can set some stuff up and it will kind of, the evolution of the site kind of to some degree, take, you know, I have a lot of stuff that's embedded from elsewhere. You know, my music is, 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 is my music embedded from my main store, which is powered by a, by a wonderful service called Bandcamp. You know, if you want to buy my music, that's the best place to buy it. Yeah, you can find it on iTunes and all the normal Amazon, the normal places you would find music. Uh, but Bandcamp has been my, my thing. Uh, 
you know, so I, I can change records, you know, uh, music that's featured there on my site easily enough. You know, it's a matter of just changing a, a code real quick. Uh, but, you know, yeah, it, there's some administrative setup stuff to that. You know, okay, I went and bought a premium WordPress theme and then customizing it and blah, 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 on and on. But, you know, fortunately, you kind of mostly just do that one time and maybe a little bit of tinkering here and there. Well, as, I, as, you can, as, you've, as you've already pointed out, it's like, hey, where's, all, where's the other guys? I guess I have more tinkering to do on that site. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, Trio, I was just wondering. Well, thank you so much for all your time today, Rob, and especially for, for coming in kind of in a little rush like you did right from another lesson. Right from and another hangout. That yeah. Was, yeah, right from another hangout. That was pretty awesome. And for sharing your experiences with us as a musician and also as a solopreneur and an entrepreneur, which, which you are, making yourself uh, a business with your online efforts as well as your in-world or real-world efforts, whatever we want to call that. Uh, so I think it's really interesting that you have clients all around the world and that they seek you out and that you give these lessons by private hangout and that you make a pretty nice living out of it and that makes you very happy. So that's, I think, an inspiration to a lot of creatives out there and also just to a lot of just regular business people who, look, who can look at it and find a working model and, you know, follow you as how to do it right. I hope it's, it's been helpful to someone. You know, I'll tell you, every day, uh, even though I've done it for, for, this, for years and years and years, every day I kind of wake up and I sort of shake my head. And I can't believe that I'm still getting away with it. Really, in many ways, <laughs> I can't believe I'm pulling it off. But it, yeah, I'm making it work so far. So knock on whatever this is made of. Do you have any upcoming events or shows or anything that you'd like to tell us about as we well, exit out? You know, yeah. I uh, do. I have anything that's coming up? Probably uh, the main thing that, I, that just jumps to my mind is when was it? I think it was just last this past week. I played a super fun concert with another great page that I think that that, if, uh, that, that artists, musicians in particular, should check out here on Google Plus. It's called Artists in the Plus. John Voschel runs this this page. It is it's a very popular page, uh, and he did a wonderful uh, job of making the, uh, what I understand is the largest online music festival of all time occurred just this past week. It was a three-day-long festival. Hundreds and hundreds of artists, and I played on there. So you poke around. You'll find my, my, uh, my performance uh, from that and, and, uh, and dig that, you know. Yeah, swing by atmosmusic.com or swing by my YouTube channel or, or just, you know, show up and rattle my cage and say howdy. I'm always interested in, hear, in, in hearing from people. Great. Thank you again so much for your time and for sharing your experiences with us. It was uh, my first time I had a musician on as a guest, and it was a lot of fun to hear things from that perspective in the music industry and how much it's different and how much it's actually similar to pretty much any other industry that wants to take advantage of using social avenues effectively to do their stuff. Andy, thank you as well for coming in. This is not the first time we have hung out together. It's always a pleasure to be with you. Do you have any announcements you would like to, to make on your way out? Uh, not unless you're a member of Ronnie's Masters Group. I'm starting up my opening up the chat thing Monday, but that's limited to just you know members of that group. And I'll be dealing basically with that from now on. Nice. But it's always nice to be with you. You always have a fun and interesting show, and I always appreciate attending it. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, I don't know if you guys are seeing my face or I still see the my website. website still. Still the because website. Because I stopped, I stopped my screen share, but it didn't want to stop. So oh. uh, I'm going to put the camera back on my on Rob as we say oh. goodbye. But I will say, please join yeah, me. I can tell you what's probably what the problem is. Please do. Uh, it. I see you're running the uh, question and answer app. Mm -hmm. That is probably part of the problem of getting back out of the screen share. Okay. Let me. And the question and answer app, I believe, unless they've changed it, it could only be turned on or off before you start broadcasting 
or after yes. you end broadcasting. Once you start it, you can't stop it during a broadcast, I don't believe. Okay, you are correct. It did give me that. So, hey, let's give this a little prop to uh, Ronnie's uh -huh. Hangout Mastery Group because that's probably where you learned this. Is that Ronnie. correct, Andy? Yep, Ronnie's that's exactly great. where I learned it. Yeah, I know okay. Ronnie. He's great. Yeah. So, hey, Ronnie, if your ears are burning, it's because we're all talking about you. Uh, and in the meantime, I'd like to say please join me again on October 18th, Friday, at 4 p.m., my guest on the next TGIF Business Networking Hangout is going to be Dr. Simone Rabbits, and she is a psychologist who is now coaching especially women and helping them deal with stress and what she calls pro-stress, which is the kind of stress that people can get under when they're starting a business and they're first starting out and things are maybe a little bit difficult, sometimes things get daunting. How do you stay focused, stay on track, beat away the blues in those first crucial years as you're starting your business? when oftentimes the Small Business Association actually tells us that it takes five years for small businesses in general to start making a profit. Mm -hmm. So there can be a lot of stress and worry during those first five years. And Dr. Simone's going to talk to us about uh, some great ways to deal with that, especially for solopreneurs, and how to stay focused and stay on track. Thank you all for joining me for the TGIF Business Networking, ha Networking Hangout, and especially thank you to my special guest, Rob Michael. It was a pleasure to have you here. I really appreciate your time. Thanks for having me, Lonnie. And to you too, Andy. Our Take Miami. care. <laughs> Everybody wave and say goodbye. Bye. <laughs>